When conducting a simple linear regression, uh, we need to check to see if the residuals follow some guidelines uh, to ensure that we can actually use our regression analysis, or that regression analysis is an adequate testing method. All right, so we need to know, first of all, what residuals are. So suppose that we have uh, some scatter plot like this for our regression analysis, and it follows, you know, we've got our line, let's say that is our line of best fit that we actually did. Now if you notice, none of the points actually like land exactly on the line. Sometimes they do, uh, but most, a lot of the times, like none of these points actually land on. And so what a residual is, is a residual is this distance uh, between the actual points and the line. And it's, it can also be kind of termed as like the errors, like this is how far off our prediction was from the actual measurements. And if we take these residuals and we plot them, we get another type of graph. And we get what's called a residual plot. And so a residual plot, uh, we are hoping, kind of looks like this. And you're like, wow, it looks kind of like nothing. It looks like this just a random cloud of data points, uh, nothing really going on there. And that's actually exactly what we want. This is what is known as a good, good residuals. Or something that looks pretty close to that. Now when we look at our residual plots, or kind of look at this graphing of our, of our errors, uh, there are problems that show up and we need to make sure basically on five specific things uh, that we are not seeing within our residual plots. So in our residual plots we want them to be what's called linear or we need to basically see linearity. It's a little different than, than what we think of kind of like linear over there, but bear with me. We're looking for it to be linear. Uh, we are looking for it to be normal. We are looking for constant variance. And we are looking for them to be independent. And finally, we want it centered about zero. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through kind of step by step on each of these to see what does it look like uh, if we uh, if we kind of break these rules or we invalidate our residuals based upon each one of these. Now, all of these have to be true of our residual plot. So right now, this residual plot is considered to like linear, normal, it has constant variance, uh, we don't have problems with independence, and it's centered about zero. So let me put up there really quick that we will have this line go through, and this is our zero line. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Okay, so first thing, let's look at kind of like a problem with linearity. So when we have a problem with linearity, what we get in our residual plot is if this is kind of our zero line again, is we might get something that kind of looks like this, or it kind of looks like a parabola, or any sort of pattern that we get with our uh, with our residuals. If we see a pattern, we have a problem. Um, and this is a problem with linearity. Now it could look like this, could look like a sinusoid, it could be you know some other uh, other pattern that, that we see, but if we see a pattern, we've got an issue, that's a problem with our linearity. So that's kind of our first check. Next check that, that we need to do is we need to check to see if it is normal. Okay, but normal kind of looks funny here. Uh, it's a, we have to kind of look at it sideways. 
And let me see if I can explain this easily. And we'll look at this next one. So basically, when we're talking about normality, it's we need to see that the residuals follow a normal distribution uh, all the way uh, along our range. But our normal distribution looks different. And I'm going to try to show you how they look different. OK. So if we think about normally, like a normal normal distribution looks something like this. And if we were to do, you know, like a histogram, right? So like a histogram of our data points would kind of look something like this, right? It kind of goes up, and then it comes back down. OK, instead of thinking about it like as, um, as a histogram, let's actually put it like in dots. So if I were to take this, and instead of making this a 2D representation, I want to make this a one-dimensional representation. And I'm just going to do dots. So if you notice, I'm going to put like just a couple of dots out here. And then they kind of get more and more frequent. A whole lot of dots right here. And then kind of less and less frequent as we go out. OK, so what I've done with this histogram is I've basically just flattened it and just turned it into dots along the number line, where most of the dots are kind of clustered right around the center. And as you get further and further out, they get less and less likely, which is exactly what a normal distribution is. OK, so when we are looking at our plot and we want to assess normality, what we are basically saying, OK, this is our zero line. What we're wanting to see is basically kind of most of the data points kind of clustered about the middle with, as you're going further and further out, fewer and fewer points. So if I kind of, if I kind of do a distribution kind of sideways, it's kind of coming down, and then it's coming up, and then it's coming back down, kind of like this all the way down. So it's kind of got this like hill thing as we're moving our way down. And so we want, yep, kind of most of these data points kind of clustered right here. And as we get further out, fewer and fewer. Now what it looks like if we have a problem is like this. Let me erase this real quick. So if we are invalidating our normality, This is what it will look like on our residual plot. Or one way that it could look. Maybe we have instead like a whole bunch of clustering way down here, and then a few data points way out there. So this is the really kind of like a skewed distribution. right? We'd see it kind of coming down, tail, and then come up right at the end. That's really not normal. It's kind of like a skewed distribution. Now, for the normality of our residuals, we actually don't just have to look at, uh, at the residual plot. We can also look at, if you remember, our QQ plot. So remember, our QQ plot is where we, if we plot these residuals against, um, against their theoretical values. We're trying to follow some sort of line. And if our data points are tied against this line of our actuals versus theoreticals, we've got normality. So this would be our QQ plot. And if they deviate heavily from here, we could say that they kind of invalidate that normality assumption. OK, so we've got those first two. We've got uh, linear, and we've got normal. And the next one that, that we're going to talk about is constant variance. So it's important that as we go along, in our regression that our model doesn't have you know, wild swings in our variance. Basically, what it's talking about is that the spread away from the line is pretty much the same all the way through the model, that we don't get like it's widely spread at the beginning and super, super tight at the end or, or, some, other, um, or some other way where we see huge swings in our variance. And when we look at our residual plots, uh, there are some dead giveaways if we have 
non-constant variance. Uh, and it actually has uh, a cool name to it. So if we are looking for constant variance, it means that our residuals are demonstrating um, homoscedasticity, or kind of like the same amount of variance as we go through. And if we have a problem, it's called heteroscedasticity, or where the variance is different as we move along down our model. So what it looks like in our residual plot, or one way that we could see it, is we see what's called fanning, where our residuals can start off really tight, and then as we go along, they get further and further away. And so what you see is this kind of classic fanning shape, where it starts off really tight, and then it gets bigger and bigger. If we see this, we have a problem with our constant variance. Up here, we see that the variance or the distance, you know, kind of spread apart from our zero line is the same all the way across our model, so that would be a good residual. This would have a problem with constant variance. Now, it, kind of a caveat to this is sometimes we have to be careful uh, because uh, the human eye is really good at seeing patterns, uh, but we have to be careful that we're not just kind of making up these phantom patterns that really don't exist. Uh, so I'll try to give you an example real quick with just a couple of data points. Okay, so let's say that we've got something that kind of looks like this, and I've got something that, that looks like this. Now, to somebody kind of getting started, they might say that, hey, look at this. We've got these data points down here, and it kind of looks like that I've got some fanning, so I'm not going to do my uh, regression analysis because the residuals have non-constant variance. Now, kind of like a rule of thumb is, is like if you can start covering up some data points and the, uh, the pattern that you see disappears, then you really don't have a, a problem. You just have a couple of odd data points. And kind of like rule of thumb, like usually it's like, you know, if you can keep it below like covering up 10% of the data points, that's really just a rule of thumb. Um, but like if I cover up these three, all of a sudden this fanning pattern that I saw basically evaporates. It goes away if I ignore those three data points. And now I, all of a sudden I don't have problems with constant variance. So that problem with constant variance, it really needs to be like a systematic problem where it's like there's a whole bunch of data pointing to this fact that we see kind of fanning. All right. Uh, just to just to make sure that you realize that it doesn't just have to be fanning from the left to the right. Uh, it can also come in a couple of other variations. Uh, so a couple other ways that the constant variance can pop up is like this. You could see something uh, well that we just saw. So const fanning that kind of looks like this we can see fanning that looks kind of in the other direction where it starts off really spread out and then gets super tight. Uh, you can also see something that was like, kind of goes like this. And we could even see something that looks like this last one, kind of like a diamond. The diamond one we gotta be careful with because a lot of times if this is what we're seeing, it's, it's actually just like a couple of data points that are making things look funny and it flattens out. But if it's like super obvious where it's super tight and then super wide and then super tight again, uh, that might be a problem. But the, the thing is, is that we want constant variance, the same distance away uh, from our zero line uh, for the whole way through. Okay, right, so that is our check for constant variance. The next one that we want to check is we want to check to see if we have a problem with independence. So when we do our sampling and things, we want our, uh, our observations to be independent from one another. Uh, but if they're not, we have what's called clustering. We see a problem with clustering. So let's say, once again, this is our residual plot. And if we see something that looks like this in our residual plot, where we've got like a couple of points here, and a couple of points here, maybe a few points there, a couple of points there. Uh, 
Okay, so this is what's known as clustering, where we have a kind of a group of data points that's super tight, another group of data points that's super tight, and then we have this big amount of empty space between these. And so this suggests that, that these data points really aren't independent, that there is something that is kind of grouping them together. Now, in a good residual, you will oftentimes see like little pockets of data points that are super close together. And that's okay, like you're almost always gonna see a little bit of clustering, a little bit of grouping. But the problem is, is when it's like this systematic, big chunks that are really, really close together with kind of this big amount of empty space uh, in between. And that, that's when we can say that, hey, we violated uh, this assumption of independence. Okay, finally, the last thing that, that you can get hung up on uh, is that our residuals need to be centered about zero. So this one we see that our zero line is right here, but if our residuals are not kind of like balanced about the zero line, so if let's say this is what our residuals look like, this actually looks like a good residual plot, it's just it's not centered about the line. Um, when using software, this one is like, I've never seen this one violated. This is mostly a problem, like if you were doing this math by hand, or if you're doing something really complicated and you've just shifted your model and it's not centered about your residuals, you need to recenter up your model. Uh, but when we put it in software, it's like this is how it calculates everything. It centers at this line uh, right in the middle of our residuals or of our data points, so it's right in the middle of the residuals. Um, but it is important that these are actually centered about zero. So now we've got kind of these five different things that we're looking for. And so let me kind of put up some quick picture summaries of what we would see for each of these scenarios. So for number one, if we have like nonlinear, and we've got this, our residuals may do something like that. That'd be a problem. Number two, if we have non-normal. Remember there are two graphs that we could look at here. If we look at it in the residuals, it might look something like where it's heavy on one side and then kind of light on the other. And if we look at the QQ plot, because sometimes it's way easier to see normality on that QQ plot, is if we have uh, what are called like heavy tails. Yeah, so we've got kind of up here, follows the line, and then it drops down. That'd be a problem with our, with our normality. Constant variance, we'll put heteroscedasticity. Heteroscedasticity. And that is going to look like something like this, non-constant variance. We'll put dependent. And this is where we see clustering. So I'm going to cluster here. Cluster there, cluster here, cluster there. A couple other data points. We'll call that clustering. And then finally, not centered about zero. looking something like that. So if any one of these are violated, then we shouldn't do simple linear regression. Now it doesn't mean that we can't do regression analysis because, I mean, this is just simple linear, just fixing a line. Sometimes we would like to fit a parabola or sometimes a sinusoid. And if we can do that, like that's a really good thing, but that's just not simple linear regression. 
If these are violated, it just means that we need to look at something else, uh, or maybe we need to do some sort of transformation on the data. Uh, but for our class, these are the five that we are worried about. Now, you might also be wondering, like, what about a sample size? Well, for a sample size for regression, you really need like a bare minimum of three data points, just from like a mathematical standpoint. Uh, but there's really like no minimum sample size. We just want enough data points to be able to like really see uh, the pattern and see what's going on. Um, so like with almost all of our statistical testing, a bigger sample size uh, is, is, what, is what we want. But the actual check to see if we can do our regression analysis is to check these five things within our residual plots.